Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning devotion. Today is Tuesday, and we are so glad that we meet again. So, let us study the Word of God and enjoy the truth of the Word. Come and join me in our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we are grateful and we are thankful to you today. And we ask the blood of Jesus to forgive us and cleanse us from all our sins. And we ask the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom, knowledge, and revelation in the word of truth that will set us free. I pray, O God, in Jesus' name for your loving kindness to be released in every hand, in every heart. This is all our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today, our uh, verses from the Bible is in the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, uh, particularly chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Let us read it. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Following the course of this word, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses or sin made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he must show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Not a result of works so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In the month of enhanced community quarantine, where it was so strict, a mother looked worried with a small piece of paper in her hand. She approached a man and without hesitation, even though the mother don't yet speak a word, the man pulled out a bill, gave it to her, and the mother looked at the man with amazement and tears. She was not prepared in that situation of that kind of kindness. Our topic in our morning devotion is unexpected kindness or unexpected means as likely to happen. The letter to the Ephesians discussed in the first chapter was the condition of man in relation to God and how he lives on earth. Men, you and me, are enslaved to sin and the cravings of the sinful nature. We want to live <coughs> a life full of the flesh, full of earthly desire. Why? Because this was our old nature. In Romans chapter 3, verse 23, Paul wrote, 
For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All mankind, regardless of their situation in life, the Bible says, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And because of this, man's desire is to be forgiven and one day to be in heaven with God. So people are trying everything. They are trying their best to do everything to receive salvation and forgiveness from their sin. But everything we do is not enough to gain forgiveness and salvation. So the gospel was being preached by the early disciples telling about the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. People who heard the story of God through Jesus Christ were so amazed. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him will not perish and have eternal life. So people don't expect that kind of kindness of God because every father don't want to sacrifice his children, especially for other person. Every father will protect his family. Every father will protect his children from any harm. But the story of God being preached is God the Father love the people and in that kind of love he sent his son to die in this world so people don't expect that kind of kindness of God so Jesus tell a parable about a family a father and the two children and one called the prodigal son because he left and ruined his life outside of his home one day this prodigal son realized in his suffering he need to return to his father so the prodigal son make a great disrespectful things in his father. He decided to return to him and expecting cold acceptance and words of curses. I think he's ready for that acceptance and words of curses. But when he returned, his father saw him and ran toward him and hugs him. He was so amazed. He is not expecting that kind of kindness. He was accepted. He was once again clothed with rich garment. And then... There's a feast for him. Brothers and sisters, we also don't expect that Jesus Christ voluntarily submit himself to die a painful death as a substitute for our punishment. For the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death or the punishment of sin is death you and me will suffer eternal death 
But Jesus Christ voluntarily submit himself to die a painful death as a substitute for our punishment. Oh, it was an expected kindness from God the Father and for our Lord Jesus Christ. This is an unexpected kindness. He do wonders. He show love. He meet all the needs of the people around. He gave them joy. They felt they are secured. And most of all, Jesus died as a replacement. He redeemed us. We are not worthy. But because of Jesus' kindness, He saved us. He forgives us from all our sin. And He received us to His hands. And one day by His kindness of grace, we will be in heaven. We will be in eternal life. In John chapter 14, He said, Let not your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house, there are so many rooms. I will prepare a place for you. Then if I finish it, I will go back and return and bring you there. And we will be together forever. Oh, what kind of kindness is that? We are unexpected with that kind of kindness. So He saved us by His grace of kindness. And out of this grace, we receive Paul words. Paul words explain that we also allow this grace to flow in us as our desire to do good works. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God preferred beforehand that we should walk in them. Like our God, the grace flows in us and that grace will sustain us to do good works, to do kindness to others. We need to allow ourselves to flow the same kindness of God to others through you and through me. We can stop to help someone in need like we do in the lives of forgotten neighbors. We offer kindness. They don't expect kindness in their lives. But we show them and release this kindness because we realize that we are also a product of God's kindness to us. So, if you saw someone who we need, small or big, stop and help someone in need. And as we show kindness to others, we will receive joy in return. Because this is the grace. And this grace is a gift of God. So we need also to be a giver of gift of kindness. Come and join me in prayer today. Heavenly Father, grateful 
and thankful for your loving kindness. Thank you because we are recipient of that unexpected kindness of the Father God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your kindness, our Lord Jesus, for voluntarily submitting yourself to die on the cross as a substitute for my life, as a substitute to die instead of me. Thank you for your grace of kindness. Thank you for giving a gift to me. And now I pray, by your grace, help me to be a vehicle of your kindness. Oh, let me also be in a position to show kindness to others. And I know by your grace and by your power, I can do all things through Christ who enabled me, who sustained me, who empowered me to do that. Father, help me to help someone who are in need and let them see Jesus Christ working through me. And through that kindness, let people draw closer to you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone who are now watching this. I pray for the love of the Father to flow in their hearts. I pray for the embrace of the Holy Spirit for them. I pray for their loved ones to be covered and protected by the arms of God. Father, I pray for everyone going in and going out from, from their home be protected by your heavenly arms. God, thank you so much. Lord, we pray, continue to protect the company. Continue, Lord, to protect the employees. Continue, Lord, to increase your blessings upon the company. Lord, grateful and thankful in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. And once again, thank you for your loving kindness. This we ask in prayer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face towards you and give you peace. Shalom. Until next week, God bless.